Mary in Frederick, Maryland, 313 East Patrick Street. And I am working on a colored pencil piece. Well, I have two of them here, but I'll work on my horse for a little bit first. I was just talking with Catherine here, one of the artists, about what it's how how busy our brains are when we're working. So sometimes when you are talking and working, it's like trying to walk and chew gum at the same time. And um, I apologize to all the artists who I thought didn't sound very intelligent when they did their demos because um, it's very hard. We have a lot going on in our head when we're working. What we were talking about was we've tried listen. What do we listen to when we're working? And we've tried books on tape, both of us, and. Uh, the books on tape. I would miss like whole passages because there's such an internal, I don't know if it's a dialogue or just your thought process while you're working. You're so busy in your head. It's very hard to um, concentrate and something is rambling in the background. You may or may not be listening to it. So music's the best. It's not like our hands are working and our brains are not. So I'm giving this horse more layers. And to do so, you get a little bit of this pulling away from the tooth of the paper. And I've noticed that besides the layers of the reductive erasing in, that when you get to the slice tool, which by the way, you're using upside down and just using it as a scraping the wax mechanism. Um, it actually does help press it into the paper. So do some erasers, but I still find, unless you've done the slice tool, it's pulling back. Now, before anybody can invented this wonderful tool, um, artists used to use everything in the world to try and get this fur effect to get their pencil strips to look smaller. Embroidery needles, scratch board tools, exacto blades, which would slice up our paper, and all of that kind of thing were. Um, so I'm just going through this area of his cheek and the hair. The hair is pretty much going the same direction gets a little rounder into here. And then this is going out. You have to go exactly with the direction and length of your hairs. Now I did not bring my Swiffer or a Kleenex. Oh, I could use a tissue. Yeah, if you don't have a Swiffer, a tissue works really well. Um, I usually use a Swiffer. The reason is because when you use your hand, it presses colors into where you don't want them, whereas if you have a tissue or a Swiffer, it'll pick them up. It'll pick up the pieces. Does the uh, heat from your fingers or the oil on your fingers affect I don't know, but like especially if you imagine working on a black piece of paper or a colored piece of paper, and then little grains of white, and then you have these smears and specks, that you can't remove. Same as like if you're drawing in graphite and you smear the black dust over a white paper. Yeah. And so um, if I've got a beautiful highlight or the blaze on his, on the horse's forehead and then smear the orange into it and yeah. ruin it. The hardest thing in colored pencil is keeping your whites white. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're just like, oops, I just smeared out the highlight in my eye by just being sloppy and being one of those artists who brushes everything away with their hands. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a slob. You know, it's colored pencil, but I still get into it up to my elbow. Look at my hand, back of my hand. I still get into it up to my elbows, just like when I was a painter. <laughs> okay. I don't like what, I don't have to wash those brushes anymore. <laughs> That's the best thing about color pencil. No brush washing. 
Just pick all the brush, the pencils that have fallen on the floor up and you're done for the day. So what I'm trying to do is just increase the, um, increase the darker values, just get them darker and more realistic. So I've got to go darker, otherwise he just looks like this weird orange pony, which although he's beautiful, he is weirdly orange. This is Chex, and he was, I'm working from a photograph from my friend um, and former art student when she was in high school, Hannah Jones. If you go to Hannah Jones Photography or at Horse Captures, uh, you will see her amazing horse photography. She specializes in horses, but she will do portrait photography, mostly outdoor. Um, I think that's her, outdoor is her specialty, but she really knows her horses. And I knew that in high school when she was drawing. I was like, you got to draw some horses because you really have the rider's perspective. So she has a business of photographing all the local shows and people portraits with their horses. This was from a portrait with the owner and horse. But I just cropped it down because I just want the beautiful eye and the reflection and all of that. And the, the bridle, which is very blue, even though it's not. It's leather. It's got brown in it. As I say that, and I'm adding brown to it. So I have brown in my hand. So what the slice tool does, for those who've never seen it before, it, the one I use looks like an X-Acto blade, but this is nylon and ceramic in the blade. Can I cut you? Yay. Um, it works like a craft knife. It'll cut anything that an X-Acto blade will cut. And it slices into the wax because I don't care how much I sharpen my pencil, a stroke of pencil is fatter than a piece of hair, especially when I'm seeing it at a distance. So if I want that look of individual hairs when I'm doing fur, you first do a few layers of a reductive technique with an eraser, which you can follow along on my videos, YouTube or Patreon, or just go to leesarts.com and look for classes. And you can sign up even for just watching the videos at your own pace and see how I do that. So a lot of people will cut in and they'll just be like, yay, I have, I have horse texture now or fur texture, but really not. Really the next thing you need to do, and I'm looking for a cream colored pencil, is if you have lights, light hairs, you have just exposed some of the tooth of the paper for it to grab onto. So this is the only way in colored pencil you can get light over dark. That is not a problem if I were working on sanded paper or if I was a pastel artist. But for colored pencil artists, you cannot get light over dark. So here and there, I've got a light bit. I've given a place for those to grab onto. And then with your dark pencil, you've also created little hills and valleys for the pigment of the darker pencil to fall into. And I love to talk about colored pencils. I could talk about colored pencil all day long. And so I have a wonderful job, which is coloring. And my other job is teaching about coloring. So like I said, leesarts.com and classes. Um, but I'm over here at Eastside Gallery. If you want to stop by and ask any questions or see my work or buy my work or work by any of the member artists, we have 16 artists here. At this point, um, 14 2D artists in all media, oil, acrylic, 
watercolor, color pencil. We've got photography, just everything. And I also have my guest artist, who's Kitty Johnson, who does wonderful animals in oil paint. And we have two um, 3D artists. One works in glass and the other is um, blacksmith artful blacksmithy. Bouquets of flowers are all over here and made in the by Monocacy Forge. So they're just wonderful. So that's how I do fur and I've got a lot of bridal to go and all of that. But I'm gonna switch over to my Another one I, just, I started in class, and this one is from a photograph by, I love my wildlife photographers who let me work from their photographs. Um, Victor Dively photographs a lot of local artwork, and we did this um, raccoon that I've got to finish peeking out from a snowy tree. That was a uh, workshop that I did. One of my so now this is another thing I do, which is portraiture, but my portraiture a lot of times is portraiture with a twist, and my twist might be this girl, for instance, a very narrative, she is, she's got her candy cane makeup on, She's got a polar bear here, and depending how much sky I have above, we could have snow or more polar bear or um, the aurora borealis. I've toyed with the idea of putting that behind them. But now go, doing skin is a totally different thing than doing fur. With fur, I want individual strokes, and with skin, I want none. So a lot of times they start out in the beginning because there's going to be a lot of layers. Um, kind of, I'm almost cross-hatching. You know, cross-hatching isn't 90 degree. It's more like 20, 30 degree. You're just varying the angle so you can get rid of the look of the strokes. At the same time, I want to build up more and more skin tone. So that the color of the paper goes away. The color of the paper, by the way, I always work on colored paper because I like to work into that light and dark into the paper. But the color of the paper is like that imprimatura first wash that a painter would do. So I've got a color down here that relates to something. In this case, it did not relate to the face, but probably to the tones in the polar bear and maybe the sky above and maybe her little polar bear hoodie that she's wearing. Um, there's a little polar bear in here too. Um, but it always kind of informs the surface because Color pencils are semi-transparent, so they'll always show through. It will always show through. Just a bit. I mean, you get to that point where you're pressing down so hard that not much is showing through, but it, it does at least inform your choices as you go. And you can use it as the shadow while I'm working, you know, the... the um, the blue works as the shadow until I get everything else going. So just like the fur, you want to stay the direction of the form when you're coloring. But that means I can go this way over her forehead, that way over her forehead. I just have to always be, even though I'm working rather quickly, I'm kind of, my pencil is going kind of fast, but it is going with the curve of her or across 
and then all these varying web of strokes we'll eventually get rid of the paper and just like when I was um, painting and I learned oil painting the marache medium marache medium method so that's very lots and lots of transparent layers so you may do a layer and feel like oh she's gotten rather orangey let me bring back the warmer golden tones of her face so you get your yellow ochre and white or mixed together that's a color pencil called jasmine and bring all that back in i love my prismacolors because they're very waxy and so the person's skin will look really smooth and you can see how that just overall just brought in warm tones all over her face and i'm going one more layer away from pencil strokes and one more layer away from having the blue show through. And then of course you constantly have to bring back your, uh, I won't say they're whites, but they're highlights. White is again the hardest thing to get <clears throat> and keep clean in color pencil. And if you want something to be light, like she has a bright highlight on her forehead, down her nose, through her cheek, um, these areas of her eye, she's got white eye makeup on because she painted like candy canes. And all of this is overlapping. And it really feels like coloring, like when you were a little kid. That you can just color all over like that. There are areas like I was working on her lips yesterday, and I do see one area that I have to fix structurally. But you um, you have to be more specific about a line. And color pencils are great for that, and all kinds of realism because they're. You can sharpen it up into a point and get all the preciseness you want. But you can also work on broad areas, just layering up and layering up. I know some people work and they just go inch by inch by inch and it's finished, finished, finished. But I'm like doing the painterly um, layers. And then I'll come back and, oops, that is not the color I thought I had in my hand. Henna will do. I need to bring back her rosy cheeks. And you do want this color to be all over. <laughs> Once you press down, like over here on the side where I'm putting in a shadow that's beyond her face, uh, once you press down as hard as you can, you've smushed the tooth of the paper and you can't really go anymore. And I want to watch that up here because I'm going to have hairs of the, of her hoodie. And I just started the polar bear and I didn't realize how much his eye was looking at her, but it's great. I'm going to leave that. And yes, I'm using a photo reference, but sometimes you already sort of know what you're doing. The 
This is my friend's granddaughter, or my other friend's daughter, because her daughter is my friend too. Um, be in one of my teen classes also. I always use real people. I know some artists make up their people in their pictures, but to me it adds another layer that I know this person and I can add, you know, if I want to add some of their personality into it. Uh, I like the challenge of making something look like an actual person. If I didn't care, I could just draw her mouth however I want. I'm like, oh no, her and her mother have this little turn right here and I've got to shadow that back in and get the top of that just so. So I'm going to be working back into that area to get the, the way their mouth goes because she looks a lot like her mom. So color pencil to me is a lot like oil painting with the layers and also with the colors. Um, you can notice by the pencils in my hand and if you take my portraiture class that I actually use the, the Zorn palette for my colors. And really, any skin tone that you're doing, you would stick to this palette. It's just that those skin tones that have more pigment to them, you're adding more colors and less pale, pale. The Zorn palette is based on a, a three color palette. It's um, cadmium red, basically, cadmium red, and either black or you could use a raw umber um, and yellow ochre. And you can do all skin tones with that. We used to have to make like the whole Zorn palette and put the the, um, the colors into the the um, little cubicles on ice trays and we have it all pre-mixed because you have black, white, and then like raw umber, um, cadmium, red. You can add in alizarin crimson, it has enough blue, but really you could do the whole color wheel from just the yellow ochre, cadmium red, and then black and um, anyway. Take my portraiture class, I'll teach you. I'll actually make you print. I'll make you, um, I'll make you mix those colors. Pencil sharpener is my favorite sound. It means there's a point coming. You always need a point. It gets into and hits every side of the tooth of the paper. So like over here where I want to get rid of everything and have those highest highlights. If I do kind of a swirly motion like this, I'm hitting that tooth of the paper from everywhere. Sounds like my nights at home watching. 
<laughs> watching Chicago Fire. And binge watching Chicago Fire and Chicago PD and pretty soon Chicago Med when that comes in. that I use with color pencil. That is always my range. So I love it when one is not in front of me. That's cream. I'm looking for my peach. Was in front of me. I can use a peach. No, it jumped out of my hand, so it's not allowed to do this. There we go. Somebody up there said, no, you may not use pink instead of light peach for your blending. See how that blends right between the darker and lighter skin tones? Because I have layers and layers to go. So as slow as this takes, You might think somebody's just crazy to go this slow because I could oil paint you quicker and just brush strokes. But I just love the way it comes out. It's so realistic, especially for um, portraiture in my mind. So come on by Eastside Gallery, 313 East Patrick Street. This show will be up one more weekend. Um, Kitty Johnson will be demonstrating her oil painting next Sunday at 3 o'clock. Uh, we will live stream that as well as it's much more fun to come in and see for yourself and look at all the artwork from all the artists. And I thank you very much. I'm going to just scan the room and all my artwork. <laughs>